Hi, I'm Steve Trapero with Pinnacle Design Center. We are an award-winning small graphic design studio, photo studio, and small art and design school in Los Angeles, California. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about some samples that I have in our personal collection of packaging, specifically about wine bottles and labels and some alcohol. Personally, uh, I'm not into red wines, I'm into white, fruity, sweet wines. Uh, this is something that I had in my wine collection for a long time as packaging, and I really liked it because of the cool round label, and the type kind of goes around on the curve and circle as well. It's pretty good. I had this in my collection for a very, very long time until I actually sampled the wine, and it was quite delicious. It's actually a Moscato de Asti, which is a pretty popular flavor of wine these days. It's very sweet and fruity and sparkling. Uh, this is the first one. And I had this in my collection before I realized what it was. My wife, Yvonne, and I went out uh, doing some research for a potential project that was coming up. Uh, we went to a place in Glendale, California called Pallet. Uh, it's a restaurant that serves wine and cheese. And when we were there, I was telling the waiter, like, oh, I don't know what I really want. I like something sweet and fruity. And he's like, oh, Moscato de Asti. Served it. We loved it. Uh, went out at a, uh, a wine store nearby called 55 Degree Wine, uh, found a bottle of it, but under a different package, but basically the same thing as this, which was uh, this one, and again, it's a Moscato de Asti, and it's uh, the exact same shape of bottle. Um, I am not sure if it's actually from the same manufacturer or not, but the taste is identical. Um, but this bottle is, when we first started getting it, was about $27. Now it's about $30 a bottle. Very delicious. Tastes identical to this one. And the, the bottle shape is identical, just a different label. And I actually think that it is manufactured by the same people. Um, but this one's a lot more corporate and kind of simple. And, and, but I like this one better. Anyways, the taste is the same. Uh, then, at a local Bristol Farms... I have this one, which is a little mini bottle also of Moscato de Asti. Very interesting about this, this label is that each of these labels are individually done, and I think this is some kind of a watercolor ink and in the printing process. Here. And the ink actually, when it hits the paper, uh, is different from bottle to bottle. How do I know? Because when I bought this, there was about seven or eight bottles on the in the, in the refrigeration section of Bristol Farms. I lined them up and chose what was my favorite because there were slight little variations of each. Um, taste, again, is, is just like these other bottles. I don't remember what the cost was on this. Um, so I started researching different Moscato de Asti's. This is one that was actually purchased at our local uh, Food for Less, and I think this was about $10, so it's significantly less. Um, the taste was about a, as equivalent. It's a nice design. All of these are pretty cool. This is kind of nice, the blue with silver. This is also a dessert wine. Uh, Bar, Barrosa is the, the name of it. What's interesting about this is it has some artwork which actually has a, the, the spades for um, playing cards. And then on the very top of the label or the, where the cork is, I don't know if you can see it, there's also a spade. So they, they usually use fine art illustrators and, and painters and put the work on the front and it relates to playing cards. Why? I have no idea. A brand of uh, wine which is actually tastes really good, but if you're not into drinking alcohol, this is from Sutter Home. It's a line called Free. One of our previous design, design interns, Jin, Gave this to my wife when she was pregnant with our second son, Taylor. And it is, uh, it's non-alcoholic, tastes just like the real thing, and this is, of course, a brute champagne. The design of the label is okay, it's kind of modern. They do that all with all of their free uh, branding. It's all very modern, kind of contemporary. So, I bought this purely because I thought that the design was kind of interesting. It's called Pink, and it is simply... Um, the category is Australian sparkling, sparkling wine, which sounds kind of ominous. It tastes like shit. 
Uh, but I think the design is inter interesting, and the whole thing with Pink University, the Victoria's Secrets does, and the whole pink actually representing pussy, which a lot of people don't realize. Uh, as a photographer, uh, a lot of times models will say, like, I do nudes, but I don't show the pink, meaning they don't do spread leg shots. So I just think the whole thing, the whole play with pink is kind of funny and interesting. Um, label kind of cool, interesting, but the flavor really sucked. I'm going to put this back here so I have room for everything else. For those of you that are wine snobs, you should probably move along. Uh, I don't really care about what uh, wine snobs think about good or bad wine. I'm a pretty simple guy. Again, I like fruity white wines. This is actually a really cheap white Zimmerdel strawberry flavor. And I had a friend of mine who was a wine snob that was saying, oh, really, like these people that like strawberry flavored wines, you know, it's just so out of, I don't know what she was trying to say. But anyways, um, this is actually really, really good. It's quite inexpensive. And I don't care, you know, what, what your thoughts are on good and bad wine. This is really tasty. Great with a, um, it's Arbor Mist strawberry wine. Great with uh, like brie cheese and crackers and fruit. And really, really cheap. As I said, I don't really like red wines. This was a Merlot though, and I, and I do experiment from time to time. Uh, this is William Hill Winery. What I find really fascinating about what they do is they actually have different um, grape leaves on their label and they're embossed so it actually looks like the real leaf like kind of stuck on this. It's pretty cool. So I really like the packaging idea. Um, again, not into red wine so I didn't really care for the taste but that's just me. And uh, this we just happened to have. It's, it was still in the refrigerator. It's a Cabaret, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Smoking Loon is the brand. The, the design of the label is okay. It's kind of uh, a bit Asian feeling and kind of modern and uh, interesting. And this is simply leftover from our last event uh, when Yvonne went out and got a bunch of wine and uh, nobody drank this. <laughs> well, they drank, I think we had several bottles, but anyways, this is the last bottle of it. It's still sitting in our fridge. And then lastly, in the wines, is uh, this, which is ice wine, which it says is a product of China, which this is, but originally I believe that this ice wine per se came from Germany, and what they actually do is they actually pick the grape when it is frozen and all the sugars in the grape is crystallized. And the Canada, Germany, and I guess now China produces this particular wine, this ice wine. It's quite sweet, it's quite expensive, I love Extreme Verticals, which this bottle, of course, is. It's quite nice and fancy looking. Uh, and it should be, because it's about $80 to over $100 a bottle. So it's quite pricey. But a pretty cool design, nevertheless. So we, we ended wines with Extreme Verticals. So I thought we would come to Belvedere Vodka, which when we talked about the mini uh, bottles of alcohol, we have one of these, and this is just the large one. I love the fact that, you know, the, the front design of this building is kind of amplified by from through the front of the bottle. It's quite nice and quite sophisticated. It should be expensive, which it is. A uh, bottle of alcohol, which I don't, I think this is kind of a Chinese vodka. This was donated to us by one of our design students, Amy. And uh, she had one bottle that she showed me which had a dragon within the bottle. This one is supposed to be a phoenix by her calling. It looks more like a parrot to me, but it's actually quite cool and quite expensive. Um, I think it's about 500 bucks a bottle, but it has this nice little 3D uh, glass sculpture inside the bottle, which is kind of cool. On to sake. Uh, I don't like hot sake, but I like cold sake. This is called Aladdin's Lamp, or Aladdin, what is it? Aladdin bottle. Makes sense. Looks like an Aladdin or Genie's bottle, right? Um, this is kind of cool. I wish that they had redesigned the, the, the actual label differently. Because once you pull off the tab, the label actually comes off and it doesn't stay on the package. And I, I don't think it's that great. I think it could be really cool. But the bottle design, per se, I think is really, really, really bitchin'. It's a very old 80s term, which means cool. Another cold sake package, which, ha which has a nice illustration of a bird done in a cal calligraphy kind of brush style. 
Uh, as you can see, it's half drank because uh, I grabbed it from our fridge and I'm still not finished with it. But it's a nice design. This is an unusual combination. This is actually a sparkling sake, cold sake. The design I really think is cool. It's quite modern and progressive looking. It has this kind of tab top and the colors being kind of metallic silvers and, and blacks is pretty cool. Um, the taste was okay. It wasn't, wasn't bad. It wasn't great. And then the last thing I want to end with is a black raspberry wine that uh, my father-in-law especially likes. The taste is actually pretty good. It's a Korean black raspberry wine. Package is pretty cool and the taste is pretty good. And I think that's it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.